Every time that I mention that I'm investing in GameStop, I hear this argument that it is the next blockbuster. Is it? Actually, to tell you the truth, I think that GameStop is a dying business. So why the hell I'm investing in it? Well, it's more complicated than that. First, we need to look at the Blockbuster. I will tell you why Blockbuster actually went bankrupt and then we will see why GameStop will go bankrupt but not in the same way that the Blockbuster went bankrupt. This is what is important, the way that both of these companies went bankrupt. But first, make sure to smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm to subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you don't miss the next videos. I read the last 10k form of Blockbuster. It was issued in 2010 the year the company went bankrupt. I also read the bankruptcy form. So what's interesting to note is that uh, Blockbuster went bankrupt because of competition, mainly from uh, Netflix. And uh, this is the same thing happening with GameStop right now. But the difference is that GameStop it will not go bankrupt immediately. It still has a few years before it goes bankrupt. And this is very important because there's still money to be made on GameStop. While Blockbuster, for sure, everybody knew that there was no money to be made on Blockbuster. Blockbuster had 6,000 stores. Right now, GameStop has 5,000 stores in multiple countries. So you, you see again the similarities between the two. So that's why I don't uh, say that those people who are saying that uh, Blockbuster, uh, that GameStop is the next Blockbuster are wrong. They have some good points comparing the two companies. But uh, it's, it's more than just that they have stores in multiple countries, that they have competitors, that now people are no longer willing to buy uh, in brick and mortar retailers. All of this is true, but we need to look deeper into the numbers. And when I look at the loss balance sheet of uh, Blockbuster, we can see that they had 1.5 billion US dollars in assets and 1.7 billion US dollars in liabilities, including 800 million US dollars in long-term debt. And there was no way that Blockbuster was able to repay those debt. There was no way they could repay that. It's because they were not producing enough cash flow to repay it. They had a negative operating cash flow. And this was going on for many years. Everybody knew that uh, sooner or later, Blockbuster would run out of cash to repay the debt and they would uh, have to declare bankruptcy. And this is exactly what happened with Blockbuster. But when you look at GameStop, they have cash. They had a positive cash flow last year, even if the cash flow is now slightly negative in the last quarters. But next year, most probably, the cash flow of GameStop is going to be positive again because of the new console cycle. GameStop has the advantage that there is a new console cycle next year. This year, actually, in 2020, November 2020. And next year, the sales of GameStop is going to be higher compared to this year because of this new console cycle. I'm not telling you that, that everybody is going to buy their new consoles on GameStop. Many people will still buy on Amazon, will still buy in Walmart at the Best Buy. It's true. Many people will prefer to download the games on the internet instead of buying them in physical form at GameStop. It's true. But still, GameStop will make more money because of this new console cycle because some people will still prefer to go and buy at GameStop. It can be 5% of the people, 10% of the people, it doesn't matter, but some people will do it and this will be enough for the stock price to skyrocket. It's because GameStop has really good fundamentals. They have cash, like I told you. They are using this cash to repay the debt and at the same time, they're using the cash to buy back shares. Right now, we'll see that the number of shares are going down. In the last quarter alone, they bought back 35% of the shares and uh, right now, they have enough uh, in the program to buy back about 50% of the shares. So if they keep buying back their shares, of course, when the stock price goes up, this will be a great thing for the company, for the stock. Because when you have less share, you don't have to make uh, a lot of profits for it to be reflected on each share. And the people who have been holding the shares, they will gain a lot from this. And this is why I tell you that GameStop is a sick of bad stock. You can still make money on GameStop. You can still make money for the next five, seven years. It doesn't... It, or even shorter than that. It, nobody knows exactly for how long you'll be able to make money, but I believe that GameStop it still has at least five years before it goes bankrupt. Eventually, it will go bankrupt because like I told you, this is a dying business. But you can still make money on GameStop. And it's not just because of the fundamentals, it's also because of the technicals. Actually, the technicals of GameStop look much better than the fundamentals. I'm not a technical analyst. I prefer fundamental analysis, but Lately, I have been looking at the technicals of GameStop and I saw something very, very interesting. Something that I did not see 
I did not see before in uh, when I've been investing in GameStop, I was basing only on the fundamentals, but now I saw this with GameStop, this technical, and this really made me happy. Let's talk about this. Right now, 96% of all the shares outstanding of GameStop are being shorted. So only 4% of the shares are being used to for, for long positions actually. So how shorting works, um, maybe you, you know about it. Shorting is when uh, you want the stock price to go lower. So you're betting against uh, the stock. Let's say right now the stock price of GameStop is about $4. We expect it to be $3 next year. So what you're going to do, you are going to short the stock. How do you do that? You borrow the shares from someone else and then you sell the shares. Let's say you have borrowed 100 shares of GameStop from someone else at $4 per share and you sell all these shares in the open market. So you have $400. You have $400 in your pocket and now if you're right and the price goes to $3 per share, you buy back the 100 shares that you sold. So the total amount you have spent to buy back those shares is $300. You return it to the owner of the shares and you have 100 US dollars as profit. This is how you make money shorting stocks. Of course, you need to pay an interest to that person who owned the shares. Let's say it's 10%, so you still have $90 as profit. So many people actually short stocks like this. But now there are 96% of the shares which are being shorted. And this can lead to something co called a short squeeze. To understand what is a short squeeze, we need to look at Volkswagen in 2008. In 2008, Porsche was buying shares of Volkswagen. And uh, everybody thought that Porsche owned about 50% of Volkswagen. There was a an institution owned by the government which owned 20% of Volkswagen. So 70% of the company wa was owned. It was not being traded, 70% of the shares. And there was 10% of the shares being shorted. So 70% was not being traded, 10% was being shorted. So there were about 20% of the shares that uh, were available in the market for anyone to, to buy and sell. So in case the stock price of Volkswagen was going up, those people who were shorting Volkswagen, they needed to cover their loss. In order for them to cover their loss, they had to buy the shares of Volkswagen, the existing shares. And with 20% of the shares being traded, it was easy for them to cover that 10% of shares that were being uh, shorted. But what happened in a single weekend, Porsche said that now they own 70% of Volkswagen Group. They actually bought more of Volkswagen Group. And when they say that, there was a short squeeze because there was not enough shares on the market for the short sellers to cover their position. And when the stock price of Volkswagen went up, those short sellers were just buying shares as much as they can because they knew that the price would just go up and that triggered the stock price to go further up. And on a single day, on the 27th of October 2008, Volkswagen Group gained 300%. On that single day, the stock, uh, the company became the largest company on earth. It's not the only occasion that a short squeeze happened. In uh, 1987, there was a short squeeze with the Dow Jones. And on that single day, the Dow Jones fell by 22%. That is what is called Black Monday. And this is the worst performance of the Dow Jones of, of the stock market, the US stock market in a single day. Because there are 96% of the shares of GameStop which are being shorted right now, I believe that there is the possibility of a short squeeze happening to GameStop. Of course, like I told you, I'm not a technical analyst, so I cannot be sure 100% about that. But I talked to a few technical analysts and they say that uh, maybe I'm right about something. And maybe that's why Michael Burry has been buying GameStop because he said that this short squeeze uh, can happen because we know he made money shorting the housing market. So he knows it. Some, a few things about the shorting that we don't know. In order for this short squeeze to be avoided, maybe the short sellers can uh, talk with the management of GameStop, with the board of directors, and decide to take the company private. They can do this. And if they are going to take the company private, it will be at least for 10 or $15 per share. So I'm going to make money if they take the company private. And if they don't take the company private, then there can be the short squeeze. If there is a short squeeze, the stock price of GameStop can rise to 20 to 25 to even $50 per share. This is possible. So there is a lot of money you can make on GameStop if this short squeeze happens. So is the risk worth it? Because it is risky. You cannot invest in a company just expecting a short squeeze will happen. It, ha it can happen, it, can, it may not happen, but I believe that it will happen. And if it happens, I'm going to make a lot of money on GameStop. In total, I've invested $1,200 on GameStop. So if I'm wrong, 
in the next five years, I'm going to lose that $1,200. I'm ready to lose that. It's not the, it's a lot of money. Yes, it's a lot of money, but I'm ready to lose that over the next five years. If in case GameStop goes macro. And now if I'm right on the fundamentals, I can make, let's say about $2,000 on GameStop. Because if I'm right on the fundamentals, I think that GameStop can gain about 35%. My profits, my expected profits on GameStop is 35%. And now if I'm right about this technical, that GameStop is really going into a short squeeze then I can make maybe $5,000 on GameStop. So this type of risk, I'm willing to take it because of the reward on GameStop. Because of this technical uh, analysis that I did, I think that now I see clearly that the reward on GameStop is much bigger than I was expecting. I'm going to keep holding my GameStop uh, stock. Unfortunately, I bought too much GameStop stock uh, too quickly. I was expecting the stock price to keep rising when uh, it was announced that Michael Burry was buying. The stock price went up, so I was expecting it to keep going up and I was buying as much as I could. Unfortunately, that was a big mistake because right now the stock price of GameStop has been falling. I'm officially 20% down on my holdings on GameStop and I wish I could have bought more, but I'm not going to do it. I still have too much on my portfolio on GameStop and I don't want to buy more. So maybe if in the future the stock price continues to fall, then maybe I will, I will have to buy more. I will take the advantage. But over the next year, I'm expecting something big to happen to GameStop. It will be either a short squeeze or just a, a normal cycle. I don't know. If a short squeeze happened with GameStop, it won't be the first one. Actually, in 2013, there was another short squeeze with GameStop. But if this one happened, it's going to be bigger than the one in 2013. You can uh, find the whole analysis about uh, the GameStop short squeeze on my partnership. It's available for free. You can read it there. So let me know in the comments what do you think about GameStop. Do you think that there is going to be a short squeeze? Thank you for watching this video. Please like, subscribe and share. Please watch these two videos here if you have missed them. Have a nice day and goodbye.